This was the life of a woman in the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages was an almost cynical time. The Middle Ages lasted from the century 5 to the 15th century and is one of the most remembered periods of our history. Imagine a world in which imposing castles watch over lands shrouded in mystery and enigma. It is the Middle Ages, an era that spanned 10 centuries, from the 5th to the end of the 15th, and marked a period of immense transformations and sharp contrasts. It was a time of knights and nobles, of serfs and monks, of wars and plagues, and of power struggles that marked the course of history. But in the midst of these radical changes and tumultuous events, there lurks a lesser told story, a narrative woven with threads of courage and resilience. It is the story of women, of their lives marked by hardship and triumph. In a context of wars, plagues, and power struggles, the role and experiences of women were complex and often fraught with danger. So, before we delve into the annals of history and unravel the fascinating yet daunting lives of women in the Middle Ages, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In a world dominated by men, a woman's role was largely determined by her social status. The Middle Ages, often seen as a harsh era, was no exception. Yet the women of this time were not merely passive figures. They were active contributors to their societies, their roles shaped by their class, their marital status, and the norms of their time. Noble women, though not often in the limelight of power, were the backbone of the courtly life. They managed vast households, a task that entailed supervising servants, overseeing the education of children, and ensuring the smooth functioning of their estates. Their roles also extended into the political sphere. They arranged marriages, critical in forging alliances, and strengthening political ties. And when their husbands were away, these women stepped into their shoes, managing affairs, and even commanding troops. On the other side of the spectrum were the peasant women. Their lives were marked by relentless toil and hardship. They worked alongside men in the fields, their hands toughened by the rigors of manual labor. They bore children, often many, and raised them in an era where life was uncertain and death a frequent visitor. Yet they found time to support their families through various crafts. They spun wool, wove cloth, brewed ale, and kept the hearth warm. But whether noble or peasant, a woman's life was never her own. Her place was defined by her relationship to men, as a daughter, a wife, a mother. Her identity, her worth, and her role, all tied to her family and her social status. Yet, despite these constraints, women found ways to carve out a space for themselves. They navigated the challenges of their time with resilience and tenacity. In their own ways, they shaped the world around them, leaving indelible marks on the tapestry of history. Meanwhile, peasant women toiled in the fields, bore and raised children and supported their families through crafts like weaving and brewing. Their lives were a testament to the strength and endurance of women, a legacy that echoes down the corridors of time to this day. Marriage was seldom a matter of personal choice. In the Middle Ages, it was often a strategic contract a duty performed to secure alliances or to ensure the continuation of a family's lineage. Love, as we understand it today, was considered a luxury few could afford. Instead, practicality reigned, with marriages arranged to meet social, political, or economic needs. Yet the duties of marriage did not stop at the altar. Women were expected to manage households, raise children, and support their husbands in their endeavors. But perhaps the most perilous part of family life was childbirth. Without the medical knowledge and facilities we take for granted today, childbirth was a risky prospect. Complications were frequent, and the lack of effective treatments often made them fatal. Childbirth? A perilous endeavor that claimed the lives of countless women, with maternal mortality rates alarmingly high. Education for women was a privilege of the few. In the Middle Ages, the vast majority of women were not afforded the opportunity to learn in the way we understand it today. Their education was primarily centered around their roles as wives and mothers. They were taught the art of running a household, tending to their families, and mastering the essential skills of weaving, brewing, and cooking. However, this was not the case for all. Women of noble birth, for instance, were often tutored at home. They learned to read and write, to manage accounts, and even studied a bit of music and art. These skills not only helped them in their roles as wives of powerful men, but also enabled them to navigate the treacherous waters of court politics. 
And then there were the convents and monasteries. For women who sought a different path, these places became sanctuaries of learning. Some learned to read and write, studying scriptures and contributing to the religious discourse of the time. In the trading towns, women found work as merchants, managing stalls, selling goods, and even running inns. Some skilled women became artisans, crafting beautiful pieces of art or practical items for everyday use. There were even those known as wise women, who used their knowledge of herbs and natural remedies to heal the sick and deliver babies. They were the midwives, the healers, the unsung heroes of their time. Yet in towns, some women carved out roles as merchants, artisans, and even practiced as wise women, offering herbal remedies and midwifery services. The shadow of fear loomed large over women, particularly as the Middle Ages progressed. Witchcraft, an accusation laden with dread and suspicion, was a reality many women had to confront. It was a catch-all term, a scapegoat for unexplained misfortunes and a weapon to wield against those who defied societal norms. As the Middle Ages gave way to the Renaissance, the fear of witchcraft escalated into widespread hysteria. Herbal healers, midwives, or simply women who lived alone often found themselves at the center of these accusations. A woman didn't need to cast spells or consort with demons to be accused of witchcraft. A neighbor's misfortune, a successful crop, or even just a solitary lifestyle could be enough to arouse suspicion. The consequences of such accusations were severe. Trials were held, often based on little more than hearsay and superstition. The supposed witches were subjected to inhumane tests to prove their innocence. But these tests were rigged in such a way that innocence was nearly impossible to prove. As a result, many women found themselves condemned based on spectral evidence and community fear. The sentence was frequently death, carried out by hanging, burning, or drowning. In this climate of fear and suspicion, no woman was safe from the damning finger of accusation. Yet, amid the darkness, there were beacons of light, women who defied the constraints of their time to leave an indelible mark on history. Among them, Eleanor of Aquitaine, a woman of power and influence who masterfully navigated the political landscape of the 12th century. As queen consort of both France and England, she played a crucial role in the development of courtly culture and the arts. Another such luminary was Hildegard of Bingen, a visionary abbess, composer, and polymath. Her contributions to music, medicine, and religious thought were truly extraordinary, reflecting a mind that was both ahead of its time and deeply rooted in her faith. These women and others like them challenged the status quo, demonstrating the immense potential of women when given the opportunities. Their stories serve as powerful reminders of the resilience and strength of women, even in the most challenging times. Women like Eleanor of Aquitaine and Hildegard of Bingen showed that women could and did make significant impacts. The Black Death sweeping across Europe brought untold devastation but also unexpected social change. This deadly pandemic, which cut down millions in its wake, left a society in turmoil, forever altering the course of history. As the plague raged, traditional social structures crumbled, opening gaps that were filled by necessity and survival. In the midst of this chaos, the roles of women evolved significantly. With vast numbers of men fallen victim to the plague, many trades and crafts that had been male-dominated were left without hands to carry them on. Enter the women, stepping into roles previously denied to them, filling the void left by the departed. They became bakers, brewers, blacksmiths, even butchers. Roles that had been traditionally male. In the aftermath of such a profound tragedy, it was women's resilience and adaptability that helped societies to rebuild and recover. With populations decimated, women found new opportunities in trades and crafts, a silver lining in a very dark cloud. As the Middle Ages waned, the Renaissance dawned, bringing with it new ideas about art, science, and the role of women in society. The transition from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance marked a significant shift in European history. This period, often celebrated as a time of rebirth and renewal, saw a resurgence of interest in classical learning and values. But what did this mean for women? As the shackles of medieval society began to loosen, there was a gradual shift in the perception of women's roles and rights. Women were increasingly seen not just as mothers and wives, but as individuals capable of making significant contributions to society. 
Women like Isabella d'Este and Catherine de' Medici stepped into the limelight, demonstrating a level of autonomy and influence previously unheard of. The seeds of change were sown, leading slowly to the recognition of women's rights and contributions. In the twilight of the Middle Ages and the dawn of the Renaissance, we see the beginnings of what we now understand as feminism. As society moved away from the rigid structures of the Middle Ages, women began to assert their individuality and demand their rights. This period saw the emergence of powerful women leaders like Queen Elizabeth I of England, who ruled in her own right, demonstrating that women were just as capable as men in leadership roles. Women also began to make their presence felt in the arts and sciences. While they were still largely excluded from formal education, women like Hildegard of Bingen and Christine de Pizan made significant contributions to music, literature, and philosophy. These women were not just passive recipients of societal change, but active agents in shaping their own destinies. However, it's important to remember that the Renaissance was not a feminist utopia. Women were still largely confined to the domestic sphere and faced significant barriers and discrimination. But the seeds of change had been sown. The struggles and achievements of these pioneering women laid the groundwork for the feminist movements that would come centuries later. So as we leave the Middle Ages and step into the Renaissance, let's remember the women who dared to defy societal norms and pave the way for future generations. Their courage and resilience continue to inspire us today. Thank you for joining us on this journey. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and follow us for more fascinating historical insights.